Hi everyone, welcome back uh, to a brand new episode of the Ubrick Show. I'm uh, with your host Shaf Hashim and Manash. What's up, Manash? Hey, all good, man. All good. Very well today. How are you uh, today? Good, man. Uh, it's a weekend, Saturday morning. Uh, we are in the office. We are recording. So, uh, for everyone who is uh, who's been listening to us on podcast, make sure to subscribe to whichever channels you are listening to from and. If you've received, uh, you are receiving, uh, or seeing us on YouTube or from on our website. Make sure you subscribe to our mailing list as well. So, uh, Munash, let's jump right into today's topic. So, what are we discussing today? Hey, we're going to talk about something that has been uh, quite, uh, uh, you know, uh, quite a topic that we've been working on for a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're we're going to talk about the digital transformation for universities, especially in our region, that is the Middle East. Yeah. uh but to probably start with and talk about digital transformation let's look at look at uh, what is digital transformation so shiaf if you if you could explain that in a bit mm. it'll be great i mean uh, digital transformation is one of those like uh, you know like we had the web 2.0 discussion we had all this uh, it's one of those buzz buzzwords like every company uh, at least in dubai or internationally a lot, lot of the companies have come to the scene who say they are digital transformation specialist but this is again like one of those terminologies uh, for each company or for each person it differs i think so right uh, but yeah i think today we'll be talking about digital transformation education but the technical definition or the <laughs> how you define digital transformation is basically uh, turning a manual process or a manual task or whatever what is manual into a digital format okay it could be a lot of examples you know traditionally people used to take attendance in books records ledgers now they are actually taking records online or there is a software in place this is like way back i remember back in the day uh, it's like 10 15 years back i used to be in the university where used to have this pro- overhead projectors where uh, you know you you take the print out it's a transparent print out i'm sure you must have also seen yeah, yeah, yeah. you slide it in and you show it on the screen now you have actual projectors which have uh, ppt powerpoint slides and then in fact now you have your smart boards where you know yeah. uh, that turns into a screen and stuff like that so well said i mean these are a couple of examples of digital transformation that we have seen i, I think uh, also apart from that is okay one is turning manual into digital and also it's about uh, converting old digital technologies to newer digital technologies because i'm sure when that overhead projector came it was actually the digital transformation at that time mm. okay we are specifically speaking about education so yeah i think in a nutshell that is what it's about transforming the processes uh, and whatever is there which is manual or old digital stuff to newer now um, coming to education manash now uh, what what do we see for example over here uh, you know like one of the things that we actually see quite often is there is a lot of digital transformation happening in education right like what is the biggest example that you see immediately when you look around you know uh, when when uh, you know definitely you know smart classrooms are something that we are seeing you know there are different other um, you know facets of uh, of the education industry being transferred but mm-hmm. probably to step back and understand why digital transformation is happening is quite important yeah especially at this particular time we might be thinking that it's because of the pandemic you know people are working you know working from home professors are at home students are at their homes and they want uh, a platform to connect so this could be some example like your google classrooms your uh, microsoft teams and and these are the names that we we uh, get to see another big reason why this is happening is because there has been uh, an explosion of technology mm-hmm. for example 5 years back 6 years back so there used to be servers and things like that and now we hear about um, cloud computing everything yeah. is on cloud now yeah so because of that a lot of reason of transformation is there yeah and and thirdly and probably one of the main reasons is there are big giant tech companies like your microsoft google cisco all these guys are enabling uh, end users that mm-hmm. is education to go into a digital transformation yeah so this these are the couple of reasons and examples i think my kids have been working i mean studying from from mm-hmm. home mm-hmm. and you know they are there in front of a zoom uh, you know video conferencing software with you know with 
with a totally different experience than than they had uh, probably 18 months back i mean i mean uh, also just to add on to what you're saying to put into perspective right so especially this year in dubai uh, let's say 2020 was the year many universities here even schools higher education k12 many of them invested heavily on brand new campuses actually the investment i'm sure did not happen in 2020 these plans were there from before because there was good, decent growth so you can even where we are sitting uh, media city like knowledge park is right next door you can see the beautiful state of art google like campuses popping up yeah so i think this is what uh, uh, i think okay i think based on some uh, uh, things i've noticed so usually uh, digital transformation the people or the areas where they really get all the uh, funding or budget is usually towards the everything after uh, marketing enrollments like for example the campus when you say campus inside the campus the the infrastructure the technology to run it could be an lms it could be for example the erp whatever you know and i think there is a very big vacuum or a area or the people like say in normal terms people who don't see any money or any budgets is i believe is usually uh, the marketing and enrollments mm. like people usually don't understand you know like it's like the chicken and egg you know like last season we spoke about so ideally uh, people think that you need to have fancy or very good state of art uh, you know campuses so that you will actually attract but the people end of the day who are actually attracting these students to these state of art campuses are the marketing and enrollments people marketing people attract them enrollment people close them convert them and even operations for that matter yeah, right yeah, yeah yeah definitely yeah sorry when i say admissions i am also thinking of operations and even operations in the sense not just before enrollment even after enrollment so w- what actually happens is every year's budget that if you actually look i don't know how the budgets are like we know uh, for so i'm sure somebody now who's listening to this at this point they might be thinking then finance they're like no no there's a lot of money marketing takes a lot of money yes marketing does take a lot of money admissions does take but all this money digital transformation is limited to spending on ads spending on creatives or for example uh, that uh, offline or that uh, branding uh, hoarding i mean there is money spent but all this money uh, i think they don't get more of it so what we want to actually outline today is uh, what are other areas for example how can we actually fast track digital transformation for marketing and admissions for example and how this transformation is actually going to help you uh, grow yeah but so, before so this transformation is it going to be beyond the website your yeah. your your digital ads and, yeah. and stuff De- like definitely. that definitely so we're not going to be talking about any of those stuff mm-hmm. today so uh, but before we get into manash you know something i think there is a root uh, cause usually uh, like we discuss why digital transformation takes place yeah i think one of the points that you rightly said is it's not because so okay sometimes it's initiated from the university side from operations from the leadership uh but most of the time it's not initiated from the university side They, you have the giants like you have microsoft you have oracle or sap or whoever like hubspot all of these guys who have a solution to sell okay which might aid help aid in this digital transformation so they you know we been through this calls there is a demo and they show this to the university or the k12 okay look, this is going to change so this is usually where the start comes but st- taking a step back there is an issue that we usually see manash where lot of this digital transformation projects fail let's talk about specifically about education yeah we are talking about education uh one of the main reasons uh i think we have couple of reasons that we've actually seen four reasons which we think the number one reason yeah is i think all stakeholders are not involved okay like for example uh when let's say there is a new project for implementing a crm or a student management system now this is a whole system where operations are going to be involved marketing is going to be involved admission is going to be involved but usually the guys who might okay and uh, take this start this discussion is the it people okay now uh, like like we said we'll cut slack to all of these people it's not like somebody decided we will take it. but i think there is no internal process or there is a discussion that happens so ideally the right way is all the stakeholders have to come together and then they have to set this road map like for example exactly what you need this is number one reason and uh, when you don't have all the stakeholders in one place the project map is never clear 
so you actually don't know what you want to actually achieve end of the day so every we keep saying this you know t- departments are working in uh, silos so when you don't have these two uh, uh, angles what do you think what does this result to which is another reason yeah another reason what we've ke- kept seeing is uh, when departments are not working together uh, there's no there's there's not this whole map where you know um, yeah. you know uh, i mean how does a student come in and what are the different elements they go through and how do they get enrolled if they have a problem how do they talk so once this if this map is missing you don't know what elements to put in and what um uh, w- w- what elements of this can be actually digitally transformed yeah and because of this there's another reason that comes out is when you implement a project you have not put in kpis yeah. okay so there are there are no key performance indicator factors to see whether okay successful or is not is it is it going in the right direction or is it not and to do do, do those dry runs to find out if this is there i think setting kpis for each department and seeing if this digital transformation is not done for a for a for a publicity sake or a name mm. sake but is actually moving the needle these kpis are very important to be defined and i think the last uh, reason i think this is also a very very important reason yeah because the first three uh, points that we said uh, stakeholders not being involved no project clear uh, project map and third being kpis the fourth is i think plays a very important role is i think in any industry right when we work, when we work with b2b guys over 2 3 years there is a level of expertise that we built because we start understanding the problem similarly when we've been working with education for 5 6 years there are some things that we know some pain points which are very unique to education and when you have this kind of knowledge and any project for that matter even when you build a website for a university versus building a website for a restaurant is completely different because the behavior of people the amount of time they're going to spend so i think the number four reason is that uh, the partner that you choose to actually implement this is not experienced within education so this is i think this is not just for digital transformation even if you are running ads people so uh, you know this is one other dis- discussion also when you know when we have this discussion with market market for edu uh, one of the main uh, point points is the team of 30 you know around 60 people who was who was heading in brazil past 10 years 15 years all they've been working on is education clients even internally in our team ubrick for example our ppc guys uh, in the past 10 years the only thing two three of them have only been like they might have spent like millions in of uh, ad money optimizing and understanding because we've run campaigns for real estate we've run campaigns for automotive we've run campaigns for education but there is an understanding of true, how, what true. kind of so the reason number four is the partner that you select and this usually it's not just for education there are a lot of examples if you look a lot of erp uh, digital transformation projects that have failed purely because uh, the partner does not understand the industry yeah mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i think yeah i mean uh, see probably once you summarize this put together another important reason what we've seen good transformation happening is when there is a top down approach yeah because there are cross departments that are coming into place and there are multiple kpis being set and a lot of these are um, you know uh, kpis that 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 overlap two different functions mm-hmm. yeah it could be admissions and operations student affairs and marketing things like that so to have uh, the head of the business it could be a ceo it could be the dean these people getting involved and facilitating this through the company is very important because we have seen uh, example chef we have we have heard uh, it people reach out to us yeah yeah a lot of times a lot of times and they are the people who are driving uh, so called digital transformation initiative yes it's an it project there's technology yeah. involved mm-hmm. but the the users the stakeholders are not them and because they are not the stakeholders uh, to get another department head so for example to get the, the admissions head to make sure that they change a set of standard operating procedures it's very difficult for the it to enable mm-hmm. so having the head of the business and having the decision top down fundamentally changes or makes or breaks the whole digital yeah, the whole journey. whole look thing looks different so now let's see, you know let's move on to uh, let's say we we've, we've said you know why things don't work out and what does digital transformation mean now let's take one aspect of digital transformation specifically what been focusing on us uh, digital transformation for your marketing admissions and operations let's say okay 
Now, uh, if a university uh, was to embark on this journey, I mean, we've we've uh, detailed uh, like like a five-step process, let's say, which we think I'm sure there could be three or it could be four, it could be seven steps. But this is the basic areas that we see if universities can actually follow or education K twelve anybody in the industry if they follow uh, might be a bit more successful. So, the first step, for example, is uh, you know. Uh, what i understand i'm going to why don't you tell me for example what is the first step if if somebody is actually going to jump into this bandwagon of digital transformation for marketing and uh, admissions yeah i mean the first step is always to go back to the drawing board yeah, yeah. get these uh, at least key stakeholders of departments come together mm-hmm. and put a map of the student journey so from being a prospect who's 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 a potential student that who can come on to no uh, the university and then how they would go through different departments and for example how do they go to the website and fill up a form after they fill up a form who gives them a call how many times would they give them a call once they give them a call and they find it is good would they send them uh, more information uh, more forms to fill then goes to admissions the person might become a student how does the finance work this is a huge journey and i've just you no know, probably taken a small portion of yeah. that journey if these three four departments and probably representatives of these departments can come to a table like this and map this on pen and paper yeah i'm literally pen and paper and then probably put it into flow charts into 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 a digital format but if that can be done that is step number 1 for a successful digital transformation so you've mapped your journey and that is step number 1 yeah and and adding on to this as well manash even if this even if it's not for a digital uh, transformation project right i think many universities could really or education institutes could really benefit from this because in one of my experiences uh, i had a client uh, that i was working with uh, you know about one of the nurseries that i was working with so these guys had very less budget and one of the things we actually did working with the uh, you know the, the head of like you know the academics a person who was handling sales we only did this Mm-hmm. If you remember this example where we put this whole process in place, and without even bringing any extra budget, right? This actually resulted in actually more enrollments. Basically, optimizing the process. Yeah, because a lot of wastage happens. Mm. Yeah, a lot of wastage happens where you know once somebody is called, second time they're not called. Called, and the reason. So does the sales agent or the admission person is not doing this purposefully? Like you know, we discuss this in another episode where you have to call thousand, hundred people a day. it's clo- close to impossible to actually recollect if even if it's and just imagine you're working on top of an excel sheet mm-hmm. and this is mm-hmm. also a case for many people leads come it's an excel sheet okay i called not answering not interested boom go on ahead so and then this basically brings us to our step number 2 yeah once you have your complete journey complete journey each do- mapped out yeah. each each touch point from if what happens when they come to enroll what happens if they come and don't enroll even all those exactly yeah, yeah. so once that is done then you are in the shopping mode yeah you go to different solutions and see okay which solution would solve this portion of the problem which solution would solve this problem yeah. uh, portion of the problem and what is the budget uh, that i have uh, available so based on that you look at different systems and see which fits closest to what i have definitely it is it is very improbable that you'll have a system that'll do everything at one place yeah Yeah. So so we've had multiple examples um, yeah. you know talking to HubSpot talking to Zoho talking to other such you know Lead Square and all these places where we're seeing okay there is a process now in place there's a map in place which portion can be done by whom yeah and i think this is also a very big uh, you know we we like to call it a dilemma which we'll cover in a episode de- dedicated to this that you know we keep mentioning this universities or education higher education k12 everybody tries to find once once platform or one solution like basically one piece of software or technology that can handle the whole journey at least in our experience till now we've not come across if anybody is listening they've come across we would love to know True. but what what like monaj said is when you have the whole journey there is at least two pieces of software going to be involved here one is from the sales to marketing to admissions then you have the student management because i've seen uh, requirement sheets which has whole of sales and marketing admission which has lms which has finance which has 
I think honestly saying uh, maybe one of you know somebody develop something like this will be good but honestly saying the whole gamut is not covered so and and in fact it might be covered in some software but it might be for name sake you cannot you cannot use that function to its fullest yeah and this comes to our step number 3 which is to understand yes one software one system cannot solve the problem you might have two uh you've already invested in couple of them yeah so you might have an accounting system you have an you mean existing systems existing systems yeah uh the step number 3 is to find out if you bring a new system in how well can it integrate yeah and she have tell us how important this is like you know imagine i'm bringing a sales and marketing system mm. tell us how important how i opening was it when you started integrating with different systems yeah so what happens usually is uh, again this everything goes back to that whole chart mm. or your whole journey while you are in this journey itself you need to mark currently what all existing systems are going to take a piece of that process mm, mm. okay so the most common area that we see when integration needs to happen is after sales and marketing the moment somebody uh, is given an offer let's say that when somebody is interested a student is interested in enrolling with the university they go to another system from there for example their journey starts to becoming a student or whatever so the sales and marketing system needs to talk to each other like the sales and marketing or the erp or your admission management whatever needs to start talking so what happens is the moment the student becomes a paid student like the moment the student pays the first enrollment or whatever fee because this is going to be reflected in the finance system so that is ideally i'm just giving an example that needs to trigger to the sales and marketing system saying okay this person has paid mm. has become a student which updates the status in your marketing and sales platform saying okay one person has be- has enrolled because of the different activities because of different activities so i think it is very very important and and again so this all comes back to again going back to point to when you are looking to put a good system in place go for systems there are see uh, you know we are in dubai there are a lot of companies from all around the world from asia different countries be it india be it all you know india is a very good example there are a lot of providers but most of these providers for example this is for the it guys when they come they don't have open apis or they don't they are not software is designed to openly integrate mm, mm. and and very big advice also is don't try to you know people have off the shelf like uh, you know ready made products which are just one year old always go for tried and tested pro- products or softwares like for example we always love to give an example of hubsort let's say these guys have been been around for long and in the past 5 years they keep developing their product like what you buy now within one year you might have like two three other f- functionalities which you needed like they constantly keep updating like we see some y- universities over here who have some products if taken off the shelf from a random company and they just stuck with that they cannot integrate so integration definitely step 3 is setting up the platform or uh, you know whatever so that you can c- connect because this is going to help you get the maximum insights because end of the day this whole activity has to give you insights so that you can actually take better uh, judgments and uh, i think this come this brings us to step number 4 which is mm-hmm. the biggest rock that you need to actually move so till now you've you've, you've this is what makes and breaks manasha yeah fish. so this this is what actually makes and breaks that is that is your people yeah till now you have actually put a uh, you know a task force together you have mapped the process you have selected the software next thing now you need to en- ensure that this change is implemented within the organization yeah this is where telling people that you know what this is going to help their uh, job be more efficient mm-hmm. this is going to make sure that your uh, customers or your stakeholders are going to have, have a much more personalized experience yeah your uh, kpis can be achieved with much less of effort all these are the motivational factors that you have to bring in yeah and sometimes there's also putting uh, strict procedures in place putting playbooks in place and ample training for people so this is again step number 4 is your biggest rock that is your people so making sure these people are on board trained and yeah. in place yeah and i mean uh, i mean it's just be- like buying a uh, you know a super sophisticated uh, car yeah let's say you you bought a skyline gtr or a ferrari and a person who's been driving a corolla or a let's say whatever accord or whatever normal car 
and you give them a ferrari if you don't teach them how to actually use the car properly the functionalities all the automations because a lot of these cars have uh, you know uh, i think volvo is a better example let's say too much of functionalities are the auto, like it has smart cruise control it has lane detection it has autonomous driving but if you don't train the person to actually use like i'm driving let's say uh, a normal 10 year old car and you give me a tesla and nobody tells me about it has an autom- autonomous driving feel because i was not trained so what vanash is getting to i think this is one of the main issues many universities have got the first point correct second point correct third but this four pri- po- fourth point is where it broke they did not train the people to use so when you don't train everybody has a problem with change even internally at ubrick for example when you bring a new system it's only as successful as how many people use it true, true. so end of the year what happens is when people don't use it the finances you know there is not been any benefit to this it has not mm. optimized anything one is training and second what manash is creating playbook so people can always change but once you do this training you create this playbooks then even no matter whoever comes right it's very easy for them to actually just come on board and when you also train and have playbooks i think it's also easy because these systems allow to optimize the process themselves so the version 1 of the chart that you guys created the whole journey after 3 months you understood you go back and look at like there are a lot of areas where you can cut the whole process short mm. so i think th- definitely this step number 4 is very very important and now let's say i think uh, manash uh, now you have the four core steps i think if any university reaches till this four step i think this even any this this applies not just for let's say education even for people out of education this is the same steps that you can look at and what is the last step for example uh, we have like for example i mean this is a stand on yeah yeah this yeah. this is uh, see last step is something that we've been we've been hearing a lot a lot of buzzwords like you know like you've been mentioning that people and we've been about, we've been creating as we've well we've been creating some yeah. things around it it's about data yeah it's about looking at the flow that is happening in your system yeah and there are how many how many processes which you can actually automate today yeah so mm. today you have your machine learning algorithms you have your uh, intelligent or ai uh, algorithms available at disposal again from big companies like ibm or amazon, uh, amazon or google, google. Yeah, so days. today for example to recognize uh, this page and to understand what is the characters on it and how to make a decision on it need not be developed uh, by by an IT department it is already <coughs> developed it's an API that i can send this page uh, to them it will tell you know what this means so and so and so action should be taken this is available this can only be done once your first four steps are done you already have a process now you look at the process once again and see which place am i spending a lot of time and how i can automate that so that is step number 5 that is to leverage your AI and machine learning I- I mean just to put uh, adding to it as well uh, is uh, one is definitely uh, when you have data right for example when you have data of 5 years or let's say once you reach from step 1 to step 5 and you've gone through 3 4 months of intake and you have all this data now there is something uh, called uh, list scoring for example it's a very small example if you have the right kind of data you can actually look at last year's enrollments or this past 5 months enrollment and look at a lot of patterns and what this will help you do is it will help your admissions team your ads you can stop spending money on the type of ads the kind of targeting the kind of messaging you can just cut down and this might actually help you save like 20 to 30 percent of your budgets one second thing is again if you start looking at the data you see patterns like for example using watson it can actually crunch through ibm watson crunch through all this data and actually tell you, you know what start talking to people like these because last one year two year all your enrollments came let's say from international students they came from xyz countries with xyz kind of behaviors mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but but one of the things okay now the challenge with this is many people today they're trying to skip skip a beat mm. like for example without having step 1 step 2 step 3 step 4 everybody is trying to go for web 3.0 where they want to directly jump into ai and ml mm. i think it is very i'm not saying it's impossible but when you don't have a solid foundation in place i mean all this uh, automation uh, machine learning everything is actually built on uh, you know on on this uh, data as well and I think the last step uh, now we discuss all these five steps now there is one additional point as well if you are looking at 
digital transformation for admissions marketing and even for operations now this is something people can actually embark on standalone as well and uh, might actually you know get the university some brownie points as well as, as in something which is very unique we are talking about over here is a chat box mm-hmm. mm-hmm. i think chat box is not just for education for everybody but if you actually look online uh, currently we are building some as well for some universities over here it's it's amazing uh, the kind of like for example the amount of work 5 to 10 people can actually do you can actually have a in 3 to 4 months you can have one chatbot ai powered chatbot actually do the same kind of work basically if you have that step one in place if you have the whole chart in place you can actually take and implement this whole thing via let's say a admission assistant okay the first discussion is done by your call center agent the rest of the discussion the sales said ad, uh, the admission assistant can actually give them every information that is required the same sales chatbot can be on your website as well on your whatsapp on your yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. um, uh, facebook messenger basically once you have the bot you can actually integrate it with anything you can integrate it integrate it with your uh, erp system or your crm platform and apart from that even how operations day to day even for student affairs now many universities have this thing of they you know go students have to go online they have to request for a new student id or they have to apply for a certificate or something you know insurance whatever there is a process so instead students can actually just go and interact with this bot hi okay what is your the bot will ask what is your name what is your registration number or what is your unique id okay what can i do for you today okay i need a new student card i need a new library card i need a new fitness card i need some letter for internship something like this So I mean, this is definitely something that you can actually uh, look into as well. Yeah, and so th- this is a practical example of using so-called machine learning and artificial intelligence because you already have a system in place or you have a process in place. You know, if there is a student card replacement that has to be done, there are these three departments that have to get signed off, etc., yeah. etc. Et so that is already in paper, and then you can automate it. Yeah. yeah so this is definitely like 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 Shyam uh, was mentioning. This is something that you can. practically do today and get a lot of advantage so uh, i think monash overall uh, just you know uh, wrapping up the topic so you know we were talking about this whole digital transformation and we focused on the marketing and admission and all these areas so in a nutshell right uh, you know to the listeners or to the viewers for example uh, what we want to try and drive the idea behind us end of the day digital transformation i think the end goal is very simple if you are in education or higher education if you are in the education business it has to actually uh, increase your enrollments simple like we say a bottom line and for education the main bottom line is your enrollments has to increase and your cost of acquisition has to decrease of 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 a student yeah yeah literally cost of acquisition of cost of customer what you have to call it it has to actually increase and the cherry on the topping apart from two of these things is your enrollments increase cost is decreases you need to have enough insights so that you can actually take better decisions next intakes so this is the main idea of digital transformation is not uh, you know for a, uh, definitely awards will come and all this stuff will actually come but end of the day something functional so this is the main idea that we are trying to point in i think with that uh, you know we hope uh, today's uh, i think it was a bit lengthy but a uh, lot of things were discussed and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys in the next episode but make sure you know you guys uh, let us know what you think uh, you can reach out to me to manash you know uh, you can email us we are there on uh, linkedin we would love to you know uh, hear you know if you have some experience successful implementation failures whatever you know we would love to be part of the discussion so with that guys uh, we'll see you in the next next episode until then uh, take care guys have a lovely week bye bye bye